Rise up, we're going to pray. Put your hand on someone's shoulder. Lord, we ask that the fullness and the presence of the power of the Holy Spirit would invade the sanctuary and all the hearts who are gathered here today. Lord God, we are here with hopeful expectation, Lord God, that you're going to fill our joy tank. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. And the church said amen. amen. Applaud him loudly. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and remind them they're not at their mama's church. You may be seated. Amen. So as we, uh, we're getting ready to take up the offering, and uh, I want to read something out of the book of Matthew, and then we're going to, uh, we got a quick video, and then we're going to light the third candle, um, our uh, Advent candle. So in 2.11 in Matthew, it says, And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. So let's study this for just a second. So these kings, uh, they traveled from afar. Uh, they finally uh, got to the place where Jesus was. He was at his house by that time. This was some years later. And they brought him the best gifts they could find. They brought gold, the most precious metal there is. And then he brought him frankincense. So all you guys that are hippie people, you guys know about incense. Oh, from the 70s, the Woodstock gang. And what this is, is this is an incense. And it was a aroma that was pleasing to the Lord. And in the last one here, this myrrh, this actually comes from a tree. It's the, actually the sap or an oil from a tree, which is good for em, em, embalming or anointing uh, people. Um, and it is also used for, for wounds and whatnot. So they brought their very best gifts, traveled from afar, uh, to give to him to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords uh, for his birthday. So let's pray this Christmas that our offering is the very best that we can give the Lord. So, Lord, uh, we may not have gold or frankincense or myrrh, uh, but, Lord God, what we have we offer up to you. We pray, Lord God, that it multiplies. We pray for the gift, the giver. Uh, we pray that it's used for the church and uh, for your kingdom. Um, Lord God, and, and ask your blessing upon it. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. So applaud the Lord one more time. We'll play the video, come back, and get into some joy. Okay, if I could ask our family to come forward, we're going to light, and would you guys rise with me as we get ready to light our uh, at number three Advent candle that represents joy? of all the details in my life, the quiet confidence, the humility, it, everything is going to be all right, yes. and the determination 
to choose and praise God in every solution. Amen. In God's name, this is the best church I've ever been in. That's all I got to say. Amen. This is the place that the ghost is in. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. So, Lord God, as we embark on this journey of joy, um, Lord God, you've, you've, you've showed us um, the message of hope. You've so, showed us the message of love. And as we embark on this journey of joy, I pray, Lord God, that it's, it's real, that it helps people through their ups and downs. Um, and I ask, Lord God, that... Uh, you reveal it to be an actual spiritual force from you and not just a, a feeling. Uh, and I pray all this uh, for this divine revelation. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, so let's applaud the Lord as you're seated. So Matthew chapter 2, verses 9 and 10 is where we're going to start our message. So speaking about uh, joy for just a second, I'm going to kind of give you the, the Webster's definition of joy, and that will kind of give us a reference point. And it's kind of a worldly definition, but I want you to leave here uh, knowing that joy is actually a spiritual force from the Lord, and it's not just, uh, it's not just a feeling. And and I know some of you guys right now, you you might be thinking, some of you theologians are going, man, that's past, that's kind of a stretch when you you called it a, a a spiritual force. But I believe I can back all this up biblically, and you're you're going to benefit from it. I've already had several people that come to me that go, man, I am so glad you preach that message. It is really giving me something to hang on to. So if you come in here and you barely made it and and that kind of thing, you're going to be okay by the time you leave here. All right. Okay, so uh, out of Matthew chapter 2, verse 9 and 10 is where the message starts. So the definition here is joy is a great feeling of pleasure and happiness. And, and some of you guys might be thinking, well, happiness only comes through happenings. That's a true statement. This is just giving us a reference point here today. And rejoiced is another word we're going to use a lot here. Rejoiced is, or rejoicing is to show great joy or delight. So joy is an inward feeling, a movement. Uh, and, and rejoice is, is like an outward physical manifestation of what's going on inside. Amen? So, that, so that'll get, kind of give you a place where to start from, and I'm going to bring some scripture, and then I think when you leave here, you're going to go, you know what, it actually is a, a spiritual force, and we can have it working for us uh, just like we can uh, with the rest of the fruit here. All right, so in nine, uh, two nine it says, After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that they had seen. So let me tell you what we're talking about here. So uh, these kings are coming. They're trying to find baby Jesus. They stop. They talk to King Herod. And he's telling them, uh, you know, go out there. And here's where he's going to be. Uh, or if you find him, let me know. And he says, and behold, the star they had seen. When it rose, it went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. So they're on this journey, and they're, and they're traveling. They never lost hope, and, and I think they probably got aggravated, but they kept the star as their focus because they knew it was prophesied that they would find the Christ child underneath the star and where the star resided. Amen? So that's what helped them keep going. It says, when they saw the star, what does it say, class? When they saw the star... They rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. Let's say that again. So when they, and they were, they were probably tired from the journey, and they're carrying this gold and this frankincense and this myrrh, and they've traveled for a long way, maybe up to two years. And I don't know about you, but maybe you're, you're expecting God to do something. You've you got hopeful expectation, and you're believing he's going to do something. Well, I believe with you, and I believe that is going to start today. I believe that's going to happen right now. You have to trust in the Lord and believe that he's going to deliver like he always does. Hold on now. We have to, we have, to have, this, we have, to have this, this supernatural force of God called joy to work in our life. 
because if let's look at the let's look at the flip side of this if we believe that we can entertain devils by Ouija boards and demonic music and and movies and all these kind of vehicles and channels we also have to believe that God can work through it just the opposite way and bring joy and goodness and peace and that's what we're doing now we're live streaming we're going out through the whole world right now as we speak and all these people are benefiting from all the good stuff amen and don't you believe that the word changes things well, so the flip side of that is the enemy's working in the other way. So our, our goal today is to build up our joy tank, use it as a spiritual force to drive back evil and bring joy into our life. So here it is, verse 10. It says, when they saw the star, they rejoiced. That means there was an outward manifestation of something going on inside exceedingly with what kind of joy? Great joy. Hold on for a second. Just say that with me. One, two, three. Great joy. I mean, if, if you have to be down here on planet Earth, you might as well get some great joy. Root, you might as well, if you're, you've got to be here, let's be joyful. And, and well, hold on, for let's think about it in, in, the, in the form of Christmas carol. We went out Christmas carol the other night with Pastor Aaron, and it was fun. Uh, he's not much of a singer, but it was still great. <laughs> I mean, he's your brother. I, but here, here's the deal, but... <laughs> How much of a blessing would it be if we if we did the Christmas carols like this? Joy to the world, the Lord's come. You guys in on that? No, there's no joy there. We need we need the fullness and the presence of the Lord in us to 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 bless other people and to drive back the forces of evil. And so uh, and you're and you're going, ah, man. I think he's really reaching for it with this one. We're gonna bring it home here in just a minute, and you're gonna be able to use this in your life. Amen. Okay, so I'm going to tell you ahead of time, go ahead and turn on some Christmas carol music at your house and just let it go. Just leave it, just let it play. Amen? Amen. Turn with me into Luke chapter 2. Let's find out what he says about this whole deal. See if Dr. Luke uh, can give us a, an insight to joy. And I'm going to speed up here just a little bit. There's a lot here, and I want you guys to get this. So let's go, um, let's go to 210. 210 in Luke. It says, the angel said, to them what does it say so he's talking to the shepherds he's talking to these guys he's talking to the once again he's talking to the woodstock bunch here he says the angel said said to them fear not for behold i bring you what kind of news i bring you and what is it good news of so the the good news god it's all it's all relative to great joy or exceeding joy or abundant joy and in these kind of things and it's all it's all for God and his people. And, and you might be in your, in your spirit, man, right now going, you know what, I'm raising my hand right now to that. This, this joy, I'm in on this deal. I mean, there's, there, if you, would you rather be around somebody that's filled with joy or, or filled with bah humbuck? Joy, amen. Okay, just ask, and I knew you guys would answer that way. But here it is. Listen to what he says. So here's, what, here's how Dr. Luke interprets this. Listen, he says, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for, one, two, three, that will be for all the people. That means everybody, it doesn't matter what side of the tracks you come from, doesn't matter how big your bank account is or what part of the country or if you're big, little, short, tall, God's got, God's got a message for you all, and it's a message of joy. And he wants you to all get it. Now, you can get it if you want to, but remember, he'll never force his agenda on anybody. You can leave here in the same position you came in, but I pray that you get more joy and you go out there and share it with more people. And the church said amen. amen. Okay, so listen to this. This ought to bring you some joy here. It says in verse 11, it says, For unto you is born, what does it say? Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And the church would probably go amen to that. What's so special about that? What's special about that is he was born king. He was, oh, hold on for a second, let me, he was born king. He didn't have to become king. He was born king. He didn't have to get knighted. He didn't have to go before the church committee. He didn't have to belong to a political party. He was born king. When he was born in that major, he arrived as King Jesus. Even before the creation of the world, he was born King Jesus. So that brings me great joy. Amen. Um, 
So affiliating that with, with God and his presence and this joy and everything, let's see what King David says about this in Psalm 1611. And if we could put that up on the, on the big screen there, I want everybody to get that. So, so we're going to stay in God, stay with his people, stay in his church, and we're going to stay f- full of joy. He says, you make known to me the path of life. You make known to me the path of life. So I'm made known uh, the path of life by staying in God's word, God's people, God's church. And I know that the road is narrow and it's not wide and broad like the road to destruction. So the path of life is right here in God's holy word. Listen to what he says. And and, And start to almost believe that joy really is a spiritual force. And let's see if King David can help us with this. What does he say? In your presence, there is fullness of In your presence, there is One more time. In your presence, there is All right, so when I'm in the presence with the Lord, when I'm with his people and I'm singing his songs and I'm in church and we're doing I got the fullness of the joy of the Lord inside of me. And he says, and here's where he seats me. He says, at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. And the right hand signifying a, a place of honor. He sits all his children at the right hand. And that's the place of honor. So when I'm in the presence of the Lord and with his people, I have the fullness of all his joy. So he gives me everything I need. So think about this. So if joy, if joy is part of the fruit of the Spirit, according to Galatians 5, 22 through 25, uh, and you guys know this because you learned this in Sunday school. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So that's the fruit of the Spirit. Enjoys part of that. Amen? If we believe it really is a fruit, then it has to continue to grow. And you say, well, how can I continue to grow? You have to stay connected to the vine. You have to stay connected to the vine because that's your life source. That's where all the joy comes from, and that's connected to John 15, 5. So let's turn there and read this. Is anybody starting to believe that it, it might really be a, a spiritual force from the Lord? All right, let's read this real quick, Unless you, and, and I'm taking you someplace, so hang on. It's kind of a journey, but I want to make sure you understand this. So here it is. Um. I'm going to start in verse 4. I didn't do that in last service, so let me give you a little extra for no charge. It says, uh, 15.4, it says, Abide in me, and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself. So we know it's part, we know it's fruit, because it's in the fruit of the Spirit. All right? So, in, in what I'm trying to translate to you today is that this actually is, joy is actually a spiritual force from the Lord. And it's not even really a stretch at this point. So John talks about it. He says, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. And abide means to remain. Neither can you unless you abide in me or remain in me. So here it is. So here's the, here's the big ending to this. It says, I am the vine. This is Jesus speaking in red letters. I am the vine. You are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I'm in him, he it is that bears much fruit. Say much fruit. And we believe that the joy's part of that fruit. So I'm going to bear a lot of fruit. I'm going to bear a lot of joy. I'm the guy that's running around singing Christmas carols and praise the Lord and all that kind of stuff. All right. He says, whoever abides in me and I'm in him, uh, it is he that bears much fruit for apart from me. What does it say? You can do so as soon as you get unplugged from God and his people and his church, you become unplugged from that power source where that joy is supposed to flow through. So you're the outlet. Say outlet. You're the outlet that God is working through. You're his hands and his feet. God's not here, but he left his Holy Spirit to reside in each one of us. And that's a spiritual force. Say joy real quick. Okay, so... So in Nehemiah 8.10, we'll put that on the, on the big board there. Um, and here Nehemiah says, Nehemiah, you guys know the scripture. It says, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Say that with me. The joy of the Lord 
is our strength. So we know that. Now, let me read this here, and then we'll talk about this. So we, we've, we've heard it said. We, John talked about it a little bit here. Uh, we've read it, that it's actual fruit in Galatians. Uh, King David talked about the fullness of the joy uh, w- when we're in God's presence. So now we're going to go to Nehemiah, as Nehemiah says this. And everybody like, the joy of the Lord's my strength. Pastor, I got it. Nehemiah 8.10, rock on. Yeah, look at these arms. Huge, yeah. All right, here we go. It says, then he said to them, go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet wine, and send the portions to anyone who has nothing ready. Let me talk to you about this for just a second. So you say, well, man, this really is, this is Nehemiah preaching at his finest. This ain't Nehemiah preaching. This is Nehemiah writing it because Ezra, Ezra was preaching. And he had a wooden pulpit right out in front of the tabernacle, and he was preaching his heart out just like I am today. But here's the deal. Ezra preached to the congregation for six hours. And you guys are going, oh, man, I hope he don't go six today. <laughs> and NASCAR's on, you know. Hold on for a sec. Listen to this. So Ezra's preaching over and over and over, and he's just preaching through the Word. He's preaching through the Word. And the people are saying, give it to us. Give it to us. We, we want it. We want it. We want to be strengthened. We want to have knowledge. We want to be able to raise our kids. Just think about that. If you could get your kids to come to church for six hours instead of spending six hours on the Internet or Game Boy, Amen. they'd be a little more respectful. Get them out of their basement. Get them out of their bedroom and get them into church. That's where Junior needs to be, right? Can I keep going? Well, I'm about to. Listen. So he said, he said, here's what Ezra's preaching. He said, hey, church, if there's people that are out there that need food, give it to them. And he said, give them the good sweet wine. He said, give them the things that they need. And he goes, here, church, you don't have to qualify them. If they're in need, give it to them. If they're in need, don't embarrass them. If they're in need, give them something to drink. If they're in need, give them some money. See, a lot of times, a lot of times we're so worried about giving somebody a 20 on the corner with a with I'm a homeless sign because we want to qualify him. You're afraid that he's going to go do something with your money. Here's the deal. That money in your wallet, that's all it'll ever be. But if the guy truly is homeless, it can be a blessing to him. So don't qualify him. Let God do that. You just be the blessing that hands it to him. <laughs> Amen. And that's, and that's if God's moved on your heart. I'm not saying to go do that. I'm just saying we don't, you don't need to qualify him and, and assume what he's doing. Why don't we just assume that he's out there, he's freezing his rear end off and probably like to go to McDonald's for a couple hours and get some coffee. Is it making sense yet or am I preaching to the wrong place? And a lot of times, not you guys, but other churches, they would judge people. I'll get back to the scripture. Here you go. He says, drink the sweet wine, send the portions to anyone who has nothing ready for this day, is holy to our Lord, and says, and do not be grieved. What does it say? For the... Oh, say it like you mean it. One, two, three. For the... Amen. So the joy of the Lord's of strength. So Ezra's preaching for six hours. He said, you want to know where the the real strength comes? It comes from the joy of the Lord. He said, when you got the joy of the Lord, and he said, you can go sing Christmas carols. You can go tell people that you love them. You can hand people money that need it and give them presents and give them food and all this kind of thing and not worried about if you're going to get ripped off all the time. And so, so, we've, so now we've heard it. So we're starting to almost believe that, that joy is a spiritual force and it really can give me strength. It can really drive back the forces of evil and can really help me with my anxiety and my fear. Almost. You say, Pastor, if I just had one more scripture, I'm glad you asked for one more scripture because I got it for you. It comes out of Philippians chapter 4. And I want you to all rise up with me. So now we're going to cover the Apostle Paul. We're covering King David. We're covering Nehemiah. Uh, we're, we're talking about the Christmas story in Matthew and Luke. And so we're starting to believe that joy can actually be a spiritual force to help us in our life. So pull up uh, Philippians 4.4, 4, if you would, please, Debbie. And I want you to be thinking about this for a second. And I want to close your eyes for just a second before you look at the Scripture. And I'm going to ask, uh, I'll ask Carol to just start playing a little bit and just, just kind of bring this message home. So we've, we've covered the Christmas story or chunks of it in Matthew and Luke, and now we're working our way down to Psalms. King David talked about it. John's talked about remaining in the vine. 
Paul talked about it in Galatians and uh, Nehemiah. Now we're back here into Philippians. So the Apostle Paul's talking to the church in Philippi, and he and he and he's helping them get through. After four four, it starts talking about people that struggle with anxiety and worry and things like that. So what does he say? He starts out the message. All right, open up your eyes now. What does he say? He says, "Rejoice in the Lord always." I will say it again, rejoice. That's how he starts this dissertation. Then it goes off into a paragraph. And this is actually the prescription that I give for everybody that struggles with anxiety and worry and all these things. And it goes on, it goes on for about, oh, it goes on for about another five or six verses after that. And he's, and he's basically telling the church in Philippi, if you struggle with this thing, you're struggling with anxiety, you're struggling with cares and concerns and worry. He says the first thing you want to do is rejoice. I say it again, rejoice. He said that's what you do, and then he, and then he names all these things. And then take me down to Philippians chapter 4, verse 12 and 13. So here's the next thing that he says. Because the Apostle Paul, when he wrote, he didn't only want to just speak to the church in Philippi. He wanted to speak to the church and have Bible World travel in 2017. Rudy says, I know exactly how to live with a lot of stuff. Do you remember that time when you really had like a lot of money? You were like, oh, man, we're on top of the world, Jack. We got it. And all of a sudden, the rug was pulled out from underneath you. Just raise your hand if you even know what I'm talking about. Just hold it up there for just a second. And it's like, you know what? I finally made it. Got the good job. You know, the whole thing, it's all good. Made to the top. Bruce could tell you the story. Had it all, California, rocking out on, say, everybody's watching me. Just kind of like the Apostle Paul story. He says, here's his words. He says, I know how to be brought low. He says, I know how to abound. So he says, I know what it's like to, I know what it's like to have a lot of money. And I know what it's like to have none. He goes, it doesn't change my joy. Been there, done it. Think about that for a second. We had it, you know, just like, we had it all. And then it might have been all taken away from you somehow through some chain of events. That really can't dictate your level of joy. So here's what the Apostle Paul says. He says, I know how to abound in every circumstance I have. Le so he says, I've learned the secret. Say, so what's the secret? The secret's joy. He says, of placing plenty and hunger and abundance and need. And here's my favorite scripture, the next one. So just like I told you at the top of the the. the the sermon here about joy actually be, becoming a, a real true spiritual force. He shores up the idea and just tells you and tells me today, I can do all things through Jesus Christ who what? You go, well, what, how did he strengthen you, Pastor? Did he up your bench press a little bit? Or are you stronger in the arm? Not at all. Some of the strongest people in the whole world were women of the Bible. Or, I've told you before, it's the grandma. Oh, you know grandma. Close your eyes, you can see her. Or a surrogate or somebody that played grandma or even mom. Strong, you could always go to her. You know why? Because she had the joy of the Lord down in her heart. And they didn't have much, didn't even have a big house or fancy car. Matter of fact, probably drove the, the old Caprice till the wheels fell off of it. Back when a six-seater was really a six-seater. You could throw the other two on the dashboard in the back. Does anybody know I'm talking about that, Grandma? You could always go to her when things were just absolute nuts. You say, man, if I could just get over to Grandma's house, everything would be all right because she would give me some kind of advice and it would be strong advice. It wouldn't be like worldly advice. 
maybe your friends would say, oh, just leave her or just leave him. Forget them. Grandma would say something like, you know, you need to work it out. You need to work it out. Or she might say something really crazy like, did you pray about that, Patrick? Turn the lights down a little bit, Don. Where does real strength come from? Where does real, where does real strength come from? It comes from the Lord right. and the joy of the Lord. Because once you get the joy of the Lord, you can walk around and just be goofy almost. And people just go like, you know what? That dude has got to be on fire for the Lord. Because he's nuts. I'd like to have that kind of joy. It's a spiritual force. I get out skipping around doing things and praying for people. That joy just pushes evil spirits and evil thoughts away. And always take your Bible with you. Let's pray. Lord, we can't walk out of this sanctuary thinking that joy is anything other than an actual spiritual force that comes from you and you're the giver of it unto the people who believe. Lord God, I know that you would never impose your will upon anyone. Lord God, but you say in your word that you wish that none perish. That you didn't create hell for humans, but for demons and devils. Oh Lord, and how bad this world, this country needs a dose of the ghost. Oh, we need your healing presence. In our lives for our babies and our grandbabies. That there be a watermark across this country that Jesus Christ is Lord and we celebrate his birthday. And we stand for the things that are good and honorable. Hallelujah. Let me ask you a very simple, straightforward question. Have you ever been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ? Do you believe in his atoning work at the cross at Calvary? People were running out of time. Do you have loved ones who are unsaved? Would you like to pray for them today to be saved or come out of the darkness, come out of their addictions, come out of their place of despair? Maybe you know someone who's battling depression. Boy, wouldn't it be nice to pour out a dose of joy on them? That wrecked the enemy's world. You know who they are. And for all who need to be filled to the top at 100%, I want to ask you to do something today. I want you to move close to the altar and let God touch your life today. Come down one, come all. As we celebrate the third week of Advent season, as we get closer and closer to the birth of our risen Savior, Jesus the Christ. We're all going to get connected here, just putting your hand on someone's shoulder today. This Christmas season is a very special season. It's, it's very real. There's something almost supernatural, if you will, about Christmas services. And just raise your hand right now. Say, Lord, I need you to fill me with your, your very presence today. I need you to fill me with joy. Lord, I'm struggling in certain areas, and I need you... These, these struggles to be replaced with your joy so I can be complete. Or maybe your prayer today is, is, I've never accepted you as my Lord and my Savior, and I want to do that now. I want to celebrate the real meaning of Christmas. Come and save me, Jesus. I want to come to you today, dear Jesus. And we pray all this in his mighty name today. And this church said amen. amen. Would you applaud the Lord with me today?